I'm Salvatore Bobonis, and in today's video, I'm going to show how to use the U.S. Census Bureau's international database to produce population pyramids for different countries. Uh, to get there, just Google Census Bureau IDB for International Database, and you'll easily get to this page. Click through to the database itself, and then on the report you'd like, choose Population Pyramid Graph. Now, the Census Bureau produces animated population pyramids if you choose several years. And I'm going to start with years at 10 year increments, starting with 1980. And if I hold down the control key, I can highlight multiple years. Since the Census Bureau actually has data going way back to, uh, I think, 1960, but it also gives projections out through 2050. And while you might think that projections to 2050 are pretty dicey, in fact, population tends to move in very slow arcs. I mean, consider that everyone who's going to give birth in the next 20 years has pretty much already been born, uh, so you can pretty well predict what the population is that's going to be given birth, and fertility rates move in predictable ways. Um, it's really pretty sound to do population projections out for 30 or 40 years. I'm going to start by looking at the projections for China. I click Submit. I'm starting with China because China is maybe the most you know, dramatic case of demographic change that we have uh, in recent years. You'll see the data for China only started in 1990, after all. Uh, and here you can see the population pyramid for 1990, 2000, and if you were to scroll along all the way up to 2050. It's called a population pyramid because it's uh, arranged in such a way that on the horizontal axis are millions of people, on the left side are males, and the right side are females. So this first uh, line would indicate that between 0 and 4 years old, there are something like 68 million Chinese boys and 60-something you know, million Chinese girls. And it's called a pyramid because, obviously, as you get older, older and older and older, there are fewer and fewer people because people tend to die with age. Uh, there are no more people being made uh, at older ages. They're always being uh, dying off at older ages. So we end up with a pyramid shape for most populations. If we animate China's population, we can do that by just clicking this play button. You'll see the effects of China's one-child policy. China uh, started with a one-child policy in the 1970s, made it even more aggressive in the 80s and 90s, and as a result, China's uh, new births have declined generation after generation. And here you can see uh, the large bulge of people uh, who were born before the one-child policy. So people were born in the 1950s, 60s, and early 70s aging their way through the ranks until by 2050, China will have a very old population indeed. Now we can contrast China's population pyramid with other countries. Uh, so for example, I'll take a look at Australia. Australia has a very healthy population pyramid. There are no massive government policies that have warped the structure of the population. But instead, when you look at Australia, you can see simply huge population growth. So while Australia's population structure is pretty stable, it's just growing very rapidly. What's more, you can see that consistently over a 60-year you know, period, there are more Australians in the adult middle age ranges than there are young Australians. Now, normally that would be impossible, right? Because, you know, as I said, people are born and then they die. Uh, but in Australia, levels of immigration are so enormous and immigrants obviously are not children. Immigrants have to be adults, uh, or at least adults with children, but you, know, you, you typically don't have unaccompanied four-year-olds immigrating to countries. So as a result, uh, Australia has this big bulge of middle age populations. And this is actually very healthy for Australia's economy uh, because these are people of high productivity. Whereas in China, the people of high productivity are aging through the system so that by 2050, they'll be in their low productivity elder years. Uh, in Australia, because of massive immigration, there's a continuous stream of Australians of high productivity. That said, the population gets larger and larger and larger and larger exponentially. So Australia won't be able to keep this up forever. The question is how long will it choose to? Okay, so in different ways, China and Australia both have quite pathological population uh, structures. If we look at a third country, uh, I'm going to go here to Nigeria, which has one of the highest birth rates in the world. And 
let's animate Nigeria's pyramid. These are all 1990 through 2050. You'll see that Nigeria's population is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger via more and more and more births. So you know, every year there are more children being born and that large cohort then you know, moves up a year and another large cohort is, is born after it. So Australia or Nigeria here is in a position of exponential population growth due to a very high fertility rate. And in fact, Nigeria is likely to overtake uh, the United States in population very soon and may even overtake uh, China by the end of the century. That's right. By the year 2100, it's likely, not certain, but likely that there will be more people in Nigeria than there are in China. So get your head around that. All right. Let's look now at Japan. Japan has China's problem in spades. Japan has a uh, very severely aging population due to decades of low birth rates and low fertility. And if we look at Japan, you can see that Japan, like China, only more severely has an aging population of smaller and smaller and smaller uh, birth cohorts as this you know, bulge of people born in the 1960s passes through the population and is going to be quite old indeed uh, by mid-century. All right, well, after seeing all these pathological population pyramids, it might be interesting to look at a stable one, a country that, you know, has a modest amount of in-migration, that has a birth rate that's, or, or fertility rate that's close to replacement, it's right around two children uh, per woman, and that country is France. So if we look at France's population pyramid, you'll see instead, you know, a pretty stable population. I mean, a population that is... You know, roughly the same generation after generation uh, with you know age population aging due to improved health care over time uh, but not a lot of massive change like you see uh, in these other countries we have looked at all right that's about it I'll just quickly note that you can get all sorts of population data from uh, the Census Bureau and that goes back to 1950 actually and forward to 2050 and you can get it for pretty much every country in the world. Uh, there are other sources of data for other countries but many for many countries it's very difficult to get good estimates and in fact if you would like to know, you know population by age group, you know, five-year age group for you know, a small country like Estonia, the Census Bureau will give you a pretty good estimate. Uh, the only other place you can get estimates like this are uh, the United Nations Population Division, which uh, has similar estimates based on slightly different methodology, but you'll get very similar numbers. Or if you go to each country's individual uh, data bureau, you might be able to get data, um, or you might not. Most of us as professionals use the Census Bureau and the UN uh, Population Division as our data sources. I hope you join, enjoyed the lecture, and uh, thanks for watching.